The San Francisco Giants dropped the finale of a three-game series to the division rival Arizona Diamondbacks by a final score of 3-2. to two. And man, guys, the Giants came so close. We came so close to sweeping the Diamondbacks. And this would have been a huge victory for us. But give the Giants huge credit for coming so close to getting this victory. Sean Anderson, the rookie, continues to have an excellent rookie campaign, guys. It is so impressive what he is doing out there. He is pitching like a pitcher that has been around the league for 5 to 10 years now. I mean, every time out, it's impressive, guys. I mean, the stat line, 6 innings he dealt, giving up 5 hits, um, allowed 2 earned runs. So that he is you know, excellent, and only had one walk allowed and struck out two batters. His season ERA is now 3.94 as a rookie. And so this is very impressive. And, uh, you know, obviously as the league gets to know him better, um, you know, the batters are going to start making adjustments. And then, you know, we'll see how things pan out there. But then, of course, you know, as uh, the way the baseball world goes, the pitcher will make adjustments then back to the hitter. And basically, it's like a chess match back and forth. And so um, that is basically how it is going to play out. So, guys, um, the Giants struggled in this game against the D-back starter, 30-year-old uh, uh, Merrill Kelly. Um, he kept the Giants uh, at bay, unfortunately, in this one. And the Giants offense... Um, you know, at times can be very inconsistent as we have seen. And so um, that was the story of this game. The Giants only mustering four hits in the game. And so Merrill Kelly guys went six innings, struck out nine Giants, um, gave up the four hits, um, two earned runs, and uh, gave up one home run. That home run was by Kevin Pillar, guys. Kevin Pillar, Palau, um, hit his 10th home run of the season in this one. So Kevin Pillar, uh, really one of the biggest additions that Farhan Zaidi has made. And he has been a huge welcome to this Giants team. And, you know, look for the Giants to continue to build into the future. And uh, we'll see, you know, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, Kevin Pillar. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head the status of uh, how many years he is uh sign for or whether he'll be a free agent um, but all that will be interesting to get into um, but yeah guys nevertheless uh, man the Giants offense uh, one day you know they're one of the best offenses in baseball and you know they've been making progress um, their batting average and a lot of other uh, top offensive categories has increased steadily um, as we've gone from April into May and then jumping into June and so now we're getting into the dog days of summer and the Giants, uh, they have been making a run of late, having played very uh, much a better brand of baseball. And uh, even despite the loss today, um, we still come away with a big uh, series victory on the road. And, uh, you know, again, ha coming so close uh, to getting the sweep in this one, you know, it's a little bittersweet. But, um, you know, I guess uh, when you lose and you lose a tough game, um, it's tough. But, you know, you give yourself credit for fighting hard and almost coming away with the victory. So guys, the scoring in this game came uh, got started in the bottom of the third inning. Sean Anderson allowed a Tim LeCastro RBI single to put the D-backs on the board at 1-0. to zero. Now in the top of the fourth inning, guys, Stephen Vogt comes up with a runner at third, less than two out scenario, and he puts the ball in play, which is what you are supposed to do in that situation. So he comes away with a big RBI to tie the game at one. So here we are now, one to one. Now in the bottom of the fourth inning, the uh, Diamondbacks answer right back. So there was no shutdown inning <clears throat> by Sean Anderson in this case. Um, Christian Walker adds an RBI single, which makes the score two to one. Now um, in the Get into the Giants bullpen following uh, Sean Anderson in this one. Reyes Maranta comes out of the bullpen, guys. He goes two innings, strikes out one batter, and lowers his ERA to 2.67. What a year Reyes Maranta is having, guys, with that 97, 98 miles an hour fastball. And, uh, you know, his off-speed stuff, I mean, it just bottoms out of the strike zone. So, Reyes Maranta, very tough um, at bat if you're, you know, hitting. And then Sam Dyson, guys, another big uh, reliever out of that big Giants bullpen. Um, the clutch bullpen that we have had, they have been excellent this season. He throws an inning, gets a strikeout, and his uh, lowers his season ERA to 2.75 on the year. 
And, uh, man, so the pitcher, unfortunately, in this one that gave up the game was Mark Melanson. And uh, he's been having a good season, so this was a minor hiccup in the road. But Melanson struggled, guys, and only got one out. Uh, gave up two walks and two hits, um, which ultimately ended up allowing the game-winning run to Tim LaCastro in that bottom of the 10th inning in extra innings in Arizona. And the D-backs came away with a walk-off win, 3-2 um, to two in this one. And uh, so, you know, we'll just have to shake this one off. And again, you know, you come away with a series victory. Um, you feel good about um, how you played in the final game. So, you know, you got to be thinking positive thoughts now as the Giants move on to this uh, next series. And really, this is crunch time for the Giants because uh, they're kind of still hovering around that eight, nine games under 500 mark. And so that's still um, not very far back from 500. And, you know, if you can get to 500, Obviously, the next goal is to get to like five games above 500, then maybe 10 games and 15 games, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just kind of start building over time. And, you know, there's still, um, you know, all of summer left to kind of for the Giants to get back into the thing. So um, you just hope for the best that things can turn around. And so we'll see how it is all going to play out. As we look ahead to the future, guys, to the San Francisco Giants next game, they're going to be returning home to the great Oracle Park, and we're going to be taking on the Colorado Rockies, another dogfight with our division rivals in the National League West, guys. One of the toughest divisions, man. The rest of the National League, they don't even know what we deal with in playing all these, uh, you know, Padres and Diamondbacks and Dodgers and Rockies these uh, teams are very tough and they have been building um, you know just excellent teams and very tough competition but you know the Giants wouldn't have it any other way and that's how things are down but uh, Drew Pomerantz is going to be starting the series off guys against the Rockies uh, 27 year old uh, John Gray and the Giants have seen a bit of John Gray so um, it'll be very interesting to see again that chess match of uh, what adjustments are made and you know whether there's going to be a guessing game going on as you know some hitters go up there and they you know they look for a certain pitch in a certain zone and if they get it uh, usually they don't miss it and they hit one pretty far. So, um, yeah, it is going to be exciting, guys. I cannot wait. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that like button, guys. I very much appreciate it. And comment down below, guys, if you have any thoughts on the game, um, just all of the latest news surrounding the San Francisco Giants. Also, what do you guys think about the July 31st trade deadline? Will the inevitable question that we continuously ask ourselves and each day, as we get moved closer to that big storyline, uh, will Madison Bumgarner get traded at this deadline, or will the Giants hold on to him? Because, again, the reports have been made out that uh, the Giants feel that the value that teams have been offering for Madison Bumgarner is not worth it to make a deal. So the Giants have opted to hold on to Madison Bumgarner, um, and this could be the route that they go unless somebody is able to um, you know, give them a substantial offer in return. And so who knows what type of level that's got to be and how confident you got to be in the players and how many prospects that could be. Um, you know, so there's been some crazy things done with trading one player to acquire a lot of prospects. And so um, that's going to be interesting. Also, will the Giants uh, elect to trade some of their top bullpen pitchers? Um, I was reading a report, I believe it was the Minnesota Twins, guys, who are have their eyes set on Will Smitty, uh, the Giants closer, who's just having a phenomenal season. And so, you know, many teams around baseball are definitely coveting uh, big-time closers. And so I think uh, Will Smitty's value the Giants could get in return could be very substantial. And you have to like the confidence with a lot of the guys that come out of their bullpen to potentially have to take over that closer job. Although um, it's hard to pass up a guy that, knock on wood, you know, he's like 20, 21 saves now on the season, 21 for 21. Um, Will Smitty just always getting the job done on the season, guys. And uh, so hopefully we'll see uh, whether the Giants hold on to him or not. It's a win-win, I think. You hold on to him, you can build with him into the future, and he can solidify that closer's job um, when you get into the playoffs, hopefully down the line um, in the future. So until next time, guys, I will see you again. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.